Good morning, good sir. morning, everybody. Uh, good morning, sir. Sir, really, sir. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, thank you very much for coming to this workshop, sir. Ratnakar Reddy, sir. You have been a big support to our uh, department. Thank you. Uh, and uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, you have been a big support to our department, and uh, it's a, there are 500 participants registered for this program, and uh, uh, and it has been beamed all over the uh, world, along with the some of the faculty are also presenting uh, from Brussels University of Leuven. Uh, thank you very much, sir. You can start your presentation, sir. Thank you. Sir. Good morning, everybody. It is my uh, uh, proud privilege to introduce you to today's uh, speaker. Mr. Ratnakar Reddy KB was born and brought up in a small village in Srinivaspur Talu, Kola district, Karnataka. He completed his school education in government schools at his village and graduated in civil engineering from Sidganga Institute of Technology, Tumkur in 1998 and masters in highway engineering from UVCE in 2001 from Bangalore University with a gold medal. Mr. Reddy has over 20 years of experience in design and project management of several roads, highways, and urban infrastructure and transportation projects. He has authored and co-authored over 15 technical papers, which are published and presented in national and international proceedings and journals like Indian Roads Congress, TRB, etc. He is a life member of Indian Roads Congress, life member of Indian Concrete, Inst uh, Concrete Institute, and also past elected council member of Indian Roads Congress. He is the founder and managing director of Infra Support Engineering Consultants Private Limited, a company started in 2007 at Bangalore. The company offers consultancy service from concept to design to construction supervision and project management for various infrastructure projects like roads, highways, traffic and transportation, buildings and structures, railways, and urban infrastructures in India as well as abroad. The company employs over 220 engineers. The company is listed under the 10 most valuable engineering and infrastructure companies inside Success Magazine November edition of 2016. Mr. Reddy received following awards and recognitions. The recipient of Professor C.E.G. Justo Gold Medal for Outstanding Performance in ME Highway Engineering, Bangalore University in 2001. He's also got the Century International Quality Era Award in Geneva, Switzerland in 2015. He's also a recipient of ICI Young Engineer of Karnataka for the year 2015 for outstanding work in the field of civil engineering. Young Entrepreneur Award from Indian Council of Commerce and Industry he has received in Delhi in 2016. It's a, a pleasure having us, uh, having you uh, here with us uh, on this uh, uh, workshop, sir. Uh, I request you to kindly present uh, your presentation, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Suhas. So, uh, it's a long introduction you gave. Well, uh, I'm a uh, practicing engineer. I mean, that's the uh, best description you know I should be giving. So, uh, welcome all the participants. Uh, I believe uh, it's a, a mix of students, faculty, and uh, some practicing engineers, right? So, us? yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. We have both UG and PG students, both, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Fine. So, uh, I'm going to uh, talk today about uh, payment management system for urban roads. Now, uh, before we talk about uh, payment management itself, uh, we should now uh, go back and see, you know, why do we talk about payment and payment management system? So, the in the uh, entire uh, road infrastructure, whether it is a urban road, a village road, are an expressway or national highway. The payment, you know, uh, which you know, as the users, you know, they 
ride on the pavement and they see a, a, it is a bituminous pavement a black color uh, top or if it is a concrete kind of you know uh, we call white so uh, the cost of this pavement is almost about 60 to 70 percent of the entire investments we make in building the road infrastructure so it's, it, it consists of your subgrade granular surface base and the surface courses in the bituminous uh, pavements and same subgrade granular surface and maybe dlc and uh, pqc payment quality concrete in the concrete payments this payment is very important for both road user and for engineers i mean road engineers why because road users have their own expectations how smooth the road should be you know how good the riding quality should be at the same time for a road engineer he has a, so his own you know performance levels how he must maintain the payment now what is the problem now we are anytime anytime you take uh, anywhere any kind of road there are certain problems in roads one is there are always failures in the road now question is should should the road not be failed of course bro, any any uh, civil engineering structure we build it will require some maintenance it will undergo some deterioration because every asset has a life certain life expectancy but the uh, bigger problem with roads is they always fail and most of the times the department engineers i mean who are uh, elm of looking after uh, roads will become like kind of helplessness saying you know we are not able to maintain these roads because whenever they, there's a rainfall starts you know the monsoon comes payment will fill up potholes in other time there will be you know, utility cutting from department uh, different utility agencies so there is a kind of helplessness with them if you see some of these photos okay this is very much from our own bangalore nama bengaluru Every monsoon, I think most of us experience invariably this kind of uh, roads at various parts. Then you go further, you will see some of the wider roads also like this. And you, are, you can see these are potholes, or we can call the craters. And sometimes you don't even have pavement itself, you know, it's all washed away. So when users travel on these pavements, you know, they will. Uh, curse everyone and uh, it's not good for you know for professionals or you know engineers to really keep assets like this then you love uh, media all the time you know they highlight these issues and create much more pressure on the agencies uh, you know so they have to quickly maintain these roads various medias and then there are some uh, you know social media if, you know people you know who impact on the uh, messages they create if this is someone you know a uh, very famous artist in bangalore you now last i think this two years back he literally bought a manicure of a crocodile and then uh, got all the media attention and the bbnp has to immediately go go to that site overnight and you know rectify fill everything it's good one way it's good he's doing a good cause so yes we know that you know payments fail and there are potholes and the issues so why why this is happening and uh, what is the current status of this okay so if you see any payment it starts deteriorating from the day it's, it's open to the traffic constructed and open to the traffic because of mainly two reasons one is the traffic because of the traffic loading and two is weather when i say weather it's about drainage water in urban roads the traffic loading is really not a threat because the urban roads mostly uh, used by cars uh, light motor vehicles and very few roads are allowed uh, for commercial traffic that is goods vehicles so the traffic loading uh, the load that uh, transfers from a car to a pavement is really negligible because in all our design in our road design the design vehicle is always a truck loaded truck so whether it is for uh, uh, volume capacity ratio pcus we convert and then you know the axle loads we do and then take the design loads the axle loads permittable axle loads all that 
So, but then the second that is water drainage is the biggest uh, enemy, wherein you know you see all these uh, failures in the road. Then we have some more parameters. You know, uh, it it impacts on the uh, current status of uh, road failures. One is improper planning. When I say improper planning, none of our uh, roads in the city are really uh, planned by you know uh, planners and you know involved with highway engineers and really designed them and built. They are just formed, you know, uh, like there are new layout is formed by somebody and the houses will come up and then there is a road mark and people, you know, will start using it. Then the department comes and builds some road. When it comes to planning, there's kind of planning like, you know, what are the levels of these roads, whether your payment level should be less than the uh, house uh, uh, entrances or how the drainage will go from where to where water will flow. So what happens, you know, because of this poor planning, you know, whenever there is a rain, all the water will be simply flowing on the road. So roads become like a you know, drains. Then there are deficiencies in geometrics, like there are dead ends, you know, narrow stretches, and uh, uh, that will co again cause uh, failures. Then we have a uh, rampant uh, problem with the very poor construction and uh, maintenance practices, uh, wherein uh, we don't use the right uh, thicknesses or gradations or quality of material in some roads. Then the other big issue for uh, these uh, engineers also is that, you know, when there are many roads which requires maintenance or construction uh, requirement uh, in terms of budgets and uh, money, so they'll not have so much of money. So they'll have to prioritize, okay, let me uh, maintain this road. Now and then maybe I defer the other road. So then it also causes, you know, a prolonged uh, failures, you know, which will not be able to maintain due course of time. So then uh, question is, what is done? So is it, you know, nothing has been done? No, I think uh, most departments, government departments, or even the BBMPs or any city or corporations anywhere in the country, they are doing to their best, you know, what they think their best within the constraints, what they have. So you see every year, at least some roads are resurfaced, some roads are rebuilt, some work they keep on doing. But then a lot of payments fail prematurely because of the uh, reasons I mentioned in the previous slide. And also when it comes to urban roads, another uh, very, very uh, important uh, uh, thing is the various utility departments like your water supply, drainage, UGD, electricity, and OFC cables. These people keep on, you know, digging the roads to give new connections or repair the connections. I think this has become a biggest uh, threat uh, when the cities grow big. So when 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 you have all these issues, okay, what is a real concern of the engineer? Okay, now the engineer's concern is always is they are they unable to predict, you know, when the roads fail or when the roads requires maintenance because we know as as highway engineers that you know pavement deteriorates okay but the engineers also know pavement fails or deteriorates but they will exactly unable to predict you know when particular road requires a resurfacing and what kind of resurfacing is required then there is there are a lot of you know materials available especially when it comes to bituminous pavement if an engineer has to resurface the road, he will have to choose between a BM, bituminous macadam, and a bituminous concrete, or dense bituminous macadam, and a bituminous concrete, or whether it's a bituminous concrete of 30 mm thickness, 40 mm thickness, 50 mm thickness, or a semi dense bituminous concrete, or a chip carpet, previous carpet. Because every type of uh, treatment, you know, as certain cause, certain uh, procedure required, and it has its own life. So, if you go for a, a well, uh, you know, good thickness of DBM and BC, say about 60 mm DBM and 40 mm BC, about 100 mm thickness, obviously that road, you know, should last at least about six years. Instead of that, if he goes with a chip carpet or a premise carpet or simply a semi dense bituminous concrete, I'm sure, you know, should not last more than about two or three years because of the issues with the drainage and all. So he'll be always worried or you know confused, you know, what to do. And 
other problem is it's not just one engineer is maintaining one road so an engineer will be maintaining about 300 400 or 500 kilometers of roads number of roads again like 100 roads then for him keeping you know track of every road you know when it has been repaired when it has been maintained the history database so that's just his problem and then these engineers get transferred you know six months into this department after one year other department so definitely you know they will not have any idea about what's happening on the ground so these are the engineers real constraint so with that constraint then we have issue comes with the budget okay now yes he's a good engineer and uh, yes he is excellent in maintaining all the uh, data manually keeps you know record of all the issue, all the details of the roads and he knows exactly what is to be done consider that he knows that he will not have enough money so when he when he doesn't have enough money for example there are about 20 roads to be maintained it requires about 10 crore rupees and if he is given only 2 crore rupees what he must do which road he must you know first maintain and uh, which roads he has to defer and then what happens if those roads are deferred? So these are all the constraints we have. That's what when I say competing demands and limiting budgets. So for all these things and for various choices he has in terms of materials and different treatments and then techniques and then for the desired performance level. When I say desired performance level, so I think most of you know that uh, whenever we say whether the road is good, bad or fair, we always talk about certain, you know, technical uh, terms like, you know, roughness, or IRA, International Roughness Index, or we call unevenness. So we know that uh, a newly built road by a highway should have a roughness less than 2000 mm, that is 2000 mm per kilometer. And if it is a, a little older road, uh, then it should be near between 2000 to 2500, and if it crosses 2500, then you know it mandates say, resurfacing. Now, these are desirable performance levels. Unfortunately, in urban roads, nobody talks about these performance levels, and absolutely there is no you know, benchmark. So, with all these you know uh, concerns, constraints, problem, so what is the solution for a road engineer? The solution is payment management system, right? Now, what is payment management system? Basically, the payment management is a fact-based decision-making process. When I said, you know, earlier that, you know, the engineer has a constraint about, you know, not having enough data, it's all about data. So the payment management system is all about taking a right decisions based on the vast amount of data that we collect on the particular road. Okay. So it helps in, you know, providing the all the required information so that you can take a right decision and when to maintain and what material to be used and how it is to be used so an ideal outcome of payment management system is doing everything right okay if you see here a lot of you know many words with right 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 so payment management is concerned with doing right thing at the right place using the right type of material with the right thickness with the right design details and very important is you have to do all this at a least cost lowest possible cost because consider that you know we have enough money and then i don't think we require any of these things okay we can spend all that money and then you know put dbm bc every year and then your road will always good but that's not what an highway engineer must be doing so you must do at a lesser cost with you say higher returns so the the payment management system is a simple yet it's complex why it's complex because it involves various you know inputs into uh, the decision making system and it's a continuous process it is not like one time okay i i just do once now and then i can relax you know for next five years so it's not like that the payment management decision requires first planning and programming then once you do the planning you have to design it okay and then once you design and select a kind of alternative and maintenance treatment, you have one has to execute it, that is construction. Once you do the construction, again, you know that the deterioration starts from the day one of the opening to the traffic. Then you have to do maintenance and rehabilitation. Then both in construction and uh, maintenance, you have to adhere to quality control and quality assurance. Then there's a the budgeting, like 
the, what is the amount you spent and how much money is required in the future and then forecast of next year next year next year for next five years then again come back to planning so it is a continuous process ongoing process all the time so if you take about 30 years of uh, life of payment from day one till 30 years again from 30 start again go so it's a continuous process so if you see you know uh, a framework of uh, system this pms system the heart of this pms is database okay a good number of uh, database i mean the depth of data the vast amount of data will make your system very reliable right then first thing is you require the details of the roads right so if you talk about our bangalore city i think we have more than more than 10000 kilometers of roads and uh, you know in terms of number of roads probably you will have about 20000 25000 number of roads like each individual residential street or a, you know collector road or even a ring road the longest road which we have in bangalore so imagine you collecting the details of this 10000 kilometers of roads right including the name of the road which ward it belongs to which zone it belongs to and then what is this type of road whether it is a bituminous road or a gravel road or a concrete road or a white top road and what kind of geometry it has in terms of lane widths number of lanes and whether it has a shoulder it has a drainage system then what is the thickness of the pavement present thickness the history if we have any data like when it was resurfaced and then what kind of traffic it is uh, this road is being subjected to what kind of subgrade soil whether uh, is it a, a marshy soil good uh, cbr value this is that does this road as a drainage so all this data is required so if you have good data you get a good uh, reports and uh, good decisions in the payment management system so this is a one time job okay now because your road names will not change i mean uh, at least in the in the uh, system uh, the geometries will remain same unless otherwise you know uh, somebody you know removes some bottlenecks so most of these inventory details will always remain same so what is collected you know year on year is the condition assessment of the roads so every year you have to collect you know functional and structural requirements like roughness the uh, deflection values and if there's any cracking potholes raveling all this condition assessment is required year on year basis now since we are uh, though this pms has started 25 30 years ago now we have very good uh, you know ga systems wherein uh, we can bring all this road network data into our google maps or you know our satellite images and we can have good referencing systems so it's very much required when we are uh, dealing with vast number of roads then comes is analysis modules so you have a data inventory data and condition data and uh, gis referencing system then you require a model to analysis so there are various uh, models available so we can choose any one model uh, uh, to analyze and once you do the analysis then you get reports so there's a various kind of reports uh, reports that are required uh, for engineers and reports that are required for a decision makers and there are reports that is required for kind of you know ministers or you know those who wants to fund budget you know all this so this is a simple framework of payment management system so how will it will help how will a pms will help in decision making right if you see now in bangalore we have like more than 10000 kilometer of roads how will the uh, these are all managed by bbm now, how will the commissioner of BVMP will know how much money is required to maintain these roads for say next year? So I mean, it's 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 impossible, you know, manually uh, to get a kind of figure. So what uh, across the country, whether it is state governments or central governments, they do is as of now they only go on a thumb rule system. Or uh, what is thumb rule system? Okay, fine. Last year we allocated two thousand crores for the roads. This year will increase by 10% or 5% or 15%. So this is how the thumb rule. Now, is, it any, is there any rational technical uh, uh, inputs in that? No, absolutely no. At, at least in the PMS, these decisions can be made on a practical basis. And in, in other countries like, you know, developed countries like US, 
you know they do this every municipality are you know uh, this, the town we call there the counties they do this you know it's, it's purely based on data and engineers decisions and from a pms and the budgeting goes and they say this is the money required so if you give this much money i am responsible to maintain these roads at this level if you give less than this money then the health of the roads will not be good so it will help in taking decisions now as a as a road engineers i think uh, we all would have studied you know this graph it's called deterioration graph if you see uh, the graph the x axis is the age i mean the years and y axis is the condition okay so here we have put in terms of you know excellent good fair poor so what is this graph indicates is one one is we must all know that the pavement deteriorates whether you use it don't use it and uh, because of the uh, weather and the age the pavement deteriorates over a period of time so when it deteriorates you must know when the pavement has to be resurfaced or maintained for example in this graph if you see from an excellent when it reaches to fair if we decide okay fine there is a 40% drop in condition but it has it still has 70% of service life so i need to now maintain and bring back the condition to excellent so if you think at this point it requires or it costs about a $1 to do something there if you don't do that if you don't spend $1 for whatever reasons known reasons or unknown reasons and if you allow the payment to further deteriorate within no amount of time it will reach from fair to kind of very poor or fail so another 40% drop it happens what the payment will be left is only 12% of life okay approximately so at this point if we want to you know reset the payment or you know bring back to a good condition it costs about dollar 4 to dollar 5 it means nearly 400 to 5% of the money one has to spend so what is graph implies is that so the pay, the maintenance has to be done at the right time the timing is important so if you defer it there will be huge cost so to see other curve okay so same now we have again a red curve a red red is what you know you got like payment condition index of 100 and then it becomes zero over a period of time so the blue is okay you are giving a, a treatments periodic treatments kind of renewals and then every time you renew renew it so the condition comes back again deteriorates again you go for another renewal then the condition comes back so it means you can extend the life of the payment say from 0 to 60 say 60 years instead of 20 years it goes to 60 years so also the maintenance cost will be very less when we pick that right time to maintain so the whole you know uh, bottom line of these two graphs is to drive that the payment maintenance has to be done at the right time if you don't do at the right time two things will happen one is payment deteriorates very fast and it will have an impact on the road users because the condition is not good and a serious you know uh, blow to the department when they have to spend 400 to 500 600 percent more than what they could have done when at the right time so in general okay there are a lot of people you know uh, think you know either the pms is too technical or you know what it can uh, help us how it, it can uh, you know help in maintaining we normally say that pms is just like a prescription the way the doctor gives a prescription to a patient right how because i mean we are all Payment engineers are nothing but payment doctors, right? Now the patient goes and you know asks, okay, fine, I have cough and I have a headache, and then you know the doctor uh, knows exactly what prescription has to be given. This tablet, this time, you know, three times a day, or you know, for one week. Exactly, you know, the, with the payment management system, a road engineer, an highway engineer can actually uh, say for a particular road, look, you know, this road will uh, deteriorate. In the next two years three years or four years and this requires a resurfacing in the uh, next six months and uh, with this 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 data uh, this condition so this is a kind of resurfacing is required say 30 mbc is enough here or 
or uh, FDB on BC record. So it's a prescription, okay? Right. Now how? How do you do prescription? Okay. Now I'll give further simple example. Okay. So let us understand. You know, let us not make this very complex. For example, if you see got this new car. Okay. And uh, most of us, we know a lot of you know knowledge about cars, and we use day in and day out. So how do we maintain this new car? Right. And it's very simple maintenance. Right. We don't do you know dig into much more uh, for a new car. Uh, we just you know wash it, wax it. And then uh, do a simple things which required because it's a new car. If car becomes very old, then uh, we don't get into waxing, you know, kind of uh, shining or not. We get into you know uh, whether the engine is good, whether the tires has to be changed, whether air condition is working, and uh, if required, we'll do a repainting. That's all, right? If car becomes further old, okay, something like this. Do we go and uh, repaint this car? No, we don't do that. We simply say, okay, fine, boss. Uh, let me uh, make sure engine is correct and it starts working. Okay, rest I'll leave it because it has become very old. Now, if you see another car like this Premier Padmini, we are not going to do anything. Okay, so we must try to discard and then go for a new car. Exactly, it happens with the pavement also. At different time of its life, we have to go for different uh, treatments. In keeping in the overall economic uh, returns, right? So I will uh, go uh, to another example, uh, which uh, uh, I like this example very well. And my uh, professor, Dr. Viragon, uh, used to uh, teach this in, even in our college. It's a very old example. So how, in a uh, live kind of live example, you know, it will impact uh, the decisions and uh, what happens if you don't maintain uh, good and if you maintain well. So consider there are two you know, townships. One is Hatfield Township, another is Mac Township. Now you have Hatfield Township, you know, at the elm of a women engineer, very knowledgeable. And you have a uh, engineer in Mackay Township at the Elmo office who is not so knowledgeable and he has his own uh, belief, right? So how to maintain these roads. Now we are considering both the townships as exact same number of uh, roads and exact same number of uh, same condition, right? Then the actual township uh, engineer uh, comes out with a plan. What she says, look, I have 15 miles uh, of road in my uh, township. So what I will do every year, I will reconstruct three miles i'll make you know the, do a reconstruction and make the three miles good and for the balance 12 kilometer 12 miles i will do a maintenance depending upon what condition each road is so in next five years so i'm going to completely reconstruct this 15 miles okay and this is is this is her plan and then she presents to the uh, you know council and then uh, she says okay fine uh, for uh, me doing three miles per year and in five years I'm going to completely uh, rebuild these roads and then I'll do whatever required maintenance. So because she is a, she knows this deterioration curve. She knows that you know if she doesn't maintain these roads at the right time and she's going to pay huge money in the deferred period. Whereas the Maca Township engineer is he thinks he's very smart and he says, I'm going to defer all the maintenance and rehabilitation. I just go for only wherever it's urgent maintenance required. Okay. That is his belief. So he presents his plan to the council and says, I'm going to defer the maintenance. So I'm going to save money now. And everybody is happy because, you know, money is saved now. So now what happens? Now, Atfield Township goes ahead with her plan, uh, you know, reconstructing few roads and maintaining. Uh, other roads, whereas Mackay Township also goes on only maintenance of these other roads. So, at the end of first year, the Mackay Township budget or expenditure statement is this $42,000 per mile into three miles is $126,000 plus balance 12 miles, the maintenance of $5,000 is total together $186,000. The council is very unhappy because they think she has spent a lot of money compared to other townships. Whereas the first year summary of Mackay Township is much less because they are not rebuilt. They're only gone for only maintenance, emergency, urgency maintenance. And their bill is, you know, 
15 miles into three thousand dollars per mile is only one lakh forty five thousand dollars and council is very happy the first year so it continues so what happens at the end of 10 years the Mackay township has spent 1.1 million dollars and all the 15 miles of roads have become new roads and they are performing very well whereas the other township they only did maintenance and they are forced to rebuild these roads at a different date like instead of first year they did about last eight or ninth or tenth year and their total expenditure is 2.52 million dollars so what it shows is the atfield has same 15 miles they spent you know lesser money compared to mackay township the same you know length the decision making not if, i mean the right decisions at the right time if you don't make the consequence is that you're going to spend more money and also put road users into a roads with a very bad condition so they got the message and he said well so i have to respect this curve so we always tell the payment engineers must always you know remember this graph this is where deterioration happens so all what matters always is right timing right timing right timing right timing So, uh, how do we do that? Now we are very clear that, well, I think the payment management system is uh, much needed and it's very useful. So, how do we implement this payment management system in our roads? So, it, so it has three phases. In the phase one is, we must classify the uh, roads based on hierarchy. Why we must classify these roads is because in PMS, we are going to put lot of number of roads and we have to group the roads into a different hierarchies whether it is the residential streets or collector roads or sub arterial or arterial roads whatever the functional hierarchy we have so for our in the urban roads then we have to collect data so i said earlier the data is very very important here the art of the pms is data so it's a data driven so as much as data possible we must collect that includes both functional and structural Functional means, you know, uh, your uh, riding qualities, whether there is any cracks, whether any ra raveling is there. Structural, you know, go whether if there's any structural cracks are there, deflection, your strength of subgrade, thicknesses of all the layers, all this is comes on structural. And then we have to assess maintenance needs. What kind of maintenance is required? So this is a phase one. Now in the phase two, we require a model to do the analysis, okay? So we have the data and we have a series set of maintenance treatment options available. We input this into the model, analysis model. So then the model does all the you know, uh, evaluation of structural and functional, and then it determines what are the deficiencies and then do a life cycle cost analysis and comes out with, if, if we give about six options, you know, like BC, DBMBC or you know, BMBC or only SDBC or only chip carpet or only, so based on this, in the uh, also the uh, trigger level okay we say okay fine go for resurfacing at 2500 mm or say 3000 mm or only 2000 mm so based on various you know if and buts the model does the analysis do the life cycle cost analysis does an economic analysis and gives a list of you know recommendations saying okay this is the uh, best ranking option one option two option three for us to choose that's what you get in phase two and in phase three, you you got this you know recommended option, go to the site and implement it. That is maintain, do the construction. So do the renewal or resurfacing, and then do the required QA and QC. And again, collect the data. Okay, after doing the resurfacing, what is my again roughness? You know, what is my uh, various condition parameters? Again, bring it uh, those that data and put back to PMS and then keep on monitoring. So it's a phase one phase two and phase three so now let us go back the in the phase one okay what is what kind of database is required okay so as i mean civil engineers are highway engineers so unless we know what kind of data is required we will not be able to collect so i said structural condition very important is deflection either you do uh Benkelman beam deflection or old method or go for a falling weight deflectometer, which is a very you know, new method, which you can do you know, uh, at very fast rate without even uh, getting uh, under the payment. Then 
your roughness riding quality so this 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 is very important these two are very important then uh, if we have a rating system uh, unfortunately uh, in india we still don't have an established rating system for our payments whereas in other countries they have something called payment condition index pca values but uh, we can still uh, I have to collect, you know, what is the percentage of potholes, percentage of uh, cracking, percentage of rutting. If there's any edge breaks, all that we have to collect. Then the drainage requirements. When I say drainage requirements, whether the uh, internal payment drainage system is there or the surface drainage system, how good it is. Then traffic. Now, when I say traffic, we require a couple of things in traffic. One is what type of vehicles are being used on that particular road. Uh, how many cars, how many trucks, when it comes to trucks, whether it's uh, how many two axle trucks, three axle trucks, LCVs, multi axle trucks, that data is required. Then what kind of loadings they carry, either we do a sample axle load uh, uh, surveys, that's the only way to do it, or we may have to uh, presume something, you know, if you don't have a data, I mean data, go for IRC codes and then consider some axle uh, load values, standard axle load values. Then since there are, these are urban roads, we also have to uh, collect data about footpaths, if there's any utilities, uh, you know, what's happening in the uh, trenches and all. So when when we say data, the again, you know, the outcome or output of the PMS is directly, you know, linked with the quality of data we input. So if the quality of data is poor, uh, our output our results will also be poor. If the data is excellent, we get a perfect you know output. You see this uh, slide. Okay, uh, this is a uh, the right bottom is what you see. A photo is actually a photo of a road. You can see the pavement, footpath, signboards, and all. This is what we call technically is ROW image, right of way image. And all other five images, what you see is a close of laser images of the pavement. And you can see in that, you know, cracks, you know, minor cracks, and there's some white cracks, small patching. These are all captured in the camera. Now, not practically, you know, uh, when we do uh, pavement condition surveys, like uh, walking surveys, you walk along the pavement, you will not be able to see all these cracks, these failures. This is possible only with the high resolution uh, laser cameras taken at very you know, close uh, shots. So in uh, we have IRC codes uh, which uh, talks about you know payment evaluation data collection and all. Uh, whereas if you go to ASTM D six four three three, it's very uh, well uh, you know explained uh, about what kind of you know uh, surveys we must do and how do we uh, evaluate and come out with the payment condition indexes PCA values. So uh, if your students uh, were here. I would suggest you know read this uh, and understand you know how do we rate the roads at least how america does you know rating okay. so it's good because though we may have a, we may I don't have a, such practice or you know we may uh, do in a different way but it's always good to understand you know what it involves uh, to rate a payment condition right so uh, what we do in uh, India mostly is, you know, like I said, you know, we uh, record uh, percentage in cracking, patching, raveling, potholes, and then we also uh, go for rutting, whether it's severe or you know what kind of extent. So that's what we do. Uh, then, if you see here, you know, uh, and what I'm showing is, you know, uh, the regular or normal uh, way of collecting data. Okay, uh, you walk along the road. You know, mark uh, this road into a say 50 meter, 50 meter sections, and within that 50 meters, you know, say judgment. You know, you see and then say, okay, fine. I, I might it might be two percent cracking, five percent of the area is the potholes. You know, there are there is a kind of raveling of 10 percent. That's how you do manual uh, uh, survey. Now, uh, off late, you know, uh, everybody is moving towards automatic data collection. So using a network survey vehicle or data collection vehicle. Why? Because uh, this is good. Manually, we can do. When, when I started my career in uh, 2001, I mean, this is how I used to do, you know, uh, go to a, a highway. You know, there were 50 kilometers of highway. 
and uh, five engineers we used to go there and we divide into 10 kilometers and every day we walk we walk uh, the entire length of the road and then uh, rate you know i mean not rating like uh, collecting all the debt that's how we used to do but now uh, the, we are uh, mostly for all the highways we are not doing any manual uh, we have got uh, irc recommendations that we should do only uh, automated uh, vehicles so that you know it can avoid all manual uh, errors and also fast very fast okay now uh, i'm not getting into this uh, difference between manual and uh, automatic because we are more we already moved into automatic and uh, i will just explain you know typically how a automatic uh, data collection system works now it's simple a lot of equipments have are fixed into a vehicle say a car for example is a car and uh, here what is there you know you have um, right of a image capturing camera then you have laser cameras uh, to take uh, payment closer photos then there will be a, a gps uh, location identification uh, instrument and then profilograph will be there and uh, there will also be roughness okay now uh, inside uh, inside of the vehicle there will be a, a screens you know which will keep on showing you know how the data is being collected okay now this is a camera kind of simple camera uh, to capture the right of images fixed then you have uh, roughness measurement then you have a uh, instrument at the top you know it will uh, locate your geo reference then you these two are the cameras of the laser cameras which takes the uh, payment close of photos right and then you have a uh, inside you know hard disk and uh, cpu so what happens uh, typically here uh, you know that you know we always talk about lanes so this vehicle uh, moves on a lane maybe inner lane or outer lane and uh, there will be two cameras so each camera will capture uh, off of the lane so that you know it stitches both the images and you get a uh, payment image for the entire width so to save again you know because payment evaluation you know uh, when we do it's it's not like you know uh, we are going to do a different treatment for every 100 meters or every kilometer right so what we do in the rating is uh, we only uh, drive the vehicle on one lane normally outer lane or we stagger like you know for some length outer lane and some inner uh, lane so we average it out and then uh, we use the same data for the entire carriage vehicle. now when uh, this uh, vehicle is driven and if you're sitting inside you will uh, you know see the right of image on the top and left side you will see the uh, pavement image and the bottom you will see what kind of data it's being collected if there is any uh, you know utility cuts across the road or any local failure uh, you, you you have to be watchful about it and then you have to mark it because that might impact your overall you know uh, value of the uh, condition value of the payment so you have to always ignore those uh, utility cuts and our trenches then you will also get you know a, a map very simple google map showing you know on which road the vehicle is moving right So uh, we we are this is a practical example I'm giving. Uh, we are uh, working with one another uh, company in US. Uh, we do this you know evaluation of all these uh, payment condition PCA values and then evaluation. We prepare uh, reports for their county, okay, in collaboration with another company in America. So they do every year, okay, one small town. They do every year. They collect the data and based on data only the decisions are taken. So, for example, if you see uh, this image, you know, it's a simple Google image and all these, you know, roads have been marked in a black color line and there are names of these roads are there. Okay. Now, the data, since this is automated data collection, the, there's a huge amount of data that gets generated. Okay. You get, you know, like data every inch of the payment is a photo. So, to save the uh, processing time, what we do is, you know, we make an intervals. Okay. We will make it, say, 25 meters or 10 meters. Or, meters in us they still use the feed system so then we are using 30 feet okay and then we have to link the uh, right of image because the camera captures a continuous footage so it will be again you know uh, 
cut down into images and uh, at every 30 feet interval there is an image is getting generated so like this okay because whenever uh, we read we will also see this road and also uh, go to the uh, payment image and then do the rating okay so once we uh, do uh, the collect the data and uh, we do processing okay the how do we do processing analysis you know i'll skip now so what happens when we do all that we get say payment condition index okay now if you see this graph or, or this uh, image google image you have different colors okay for each road is a different color what does it indicates for example all the red color lines or red color roads are having payment condition index of 45 to 50 whereas green color is having 91 to 100 so uh, there uh, if the payment condition index is say uh, 80 to 100 they're considered as you know a very good condition and the uh, 70 to 80 you know uh, it's a fair and then if there's anything below 70 then you know it's, it's not acceptable you know there so especially if your red color means very simple they're in a very bad shape so imagine as a highway engineer in the department if we have this map it's very easy to you know uh, convince or you know show to your uh, the administration whether it's a commissioner or it's the minister who's going to approve your funding and all it's very simple look sir this is the uh, health of my road network and all these red colors requires you know, immediate uh, you know, maintenance or treatment or rehabilitation and uh, the orange color requires uh, a major maintenance and uh, yellow color requires minor maintenance and all others it doesn't require so this is the length of the road and this is the maintenance cost this, you know this is the budget i require it's very simple so the you know the job of the highway engineer becomes very very easy you know when you have this system in place or somebody wants to know okay what is my ira values of the each road okay now this so you can just take a print you know, click on the print you get okay fine look at this red color is you know not acceptable there are already more than 12 and orange is you know 10 to 12 yellow is 6 to 10 green is green is good so it's very simple the highway engineer doesn't have to worry a lot and then everything is on record so sir if you give me enough money i'm going to you know convert all this red into green and if you give less money and there will be still red will be there and then uh, my overall road health will not be so good then if sometimes you want to know okay fine uh, a particular road what is the you know type of the payment so it's very simple okay you have uh, colored you will get a one color for bituminous one color uh, for the uh, concrete roads or suppose somebody wants to know uh, a click of a mouse the entire history of the uh, road and entire health network so all is available so the life professional life of an engineer in the department becomes very easy and one person can maintain vast amount of uh, roads with all this information available so that's how the payment management system helps right and for him suppose he wants to know okay suddenly okay what's happening with this particular road and then he can just click on the road and you get all this information what is the name of the street and you know what is the length of this road how many lanes are there what is the payment type what type of road is this what is the pca values what is the ira values so everything is there so whereas in the absence of all this how do we work is you know we work in the in kind of you know uh, searching something in 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 dark right okay, kind of you know blind person okay you ask somebody is there what's happening in this you know uh, second cross fourth main hrb layout the engineer has to really go to the site and see what's happening there okay so you get again, you know, various performance uh, curves and more than 100, you know, uh, kind of reports you get uh, from the out output of payment management system. Okay. Now, this, this is all, you know, uh, you collected data and then you analyze and then you get, you know, kind of reports uh, that you get. Okay. Now, when we... Uh, to get the further de details, 
okay now uh, kind of deterioration making the deterioration curves developing the uh, life cycle cost analysis doing economic analysis and taking a decision we require a model okay so what is this model either uh, there are few models are available uh, some people have you know customized excel program some people have you know hdm4 some people have you know micro paver uh, using so we normally use in india uh, hdm4 i would develop in management 4 and this is a world bank uh, developed software which will help in you know doing strategic analysis program analysis and project analysis so it can be used at three different levels one uh, at project level where an engineer can uh, uh, input the various uh, maintenance programs he wants to check with that road and then uh, generate deterioration curves and come out with a uh, right treatment with a cost or you can group say 100 roads into one uh, program and see for given my budget okay uh, what is the total budget required then if my budget is less how do i do defer deferred maintenance and what happens on that so you can do that analysis or one can club the entire straight road network or a, say bangalore city 10000 km of road network and do a strategic planning like you know if i have to uh, maintain at say uh 2500 mm anyoneness and what kind of budget are required so total budget is uh, strategic plan so all this is available with the hdm4 analysis so uh so as i would like to stop here the uh, because this will take another one hour to explain i would rather uh, take few questions uh, from the audience if there any uh, clarifications or information required hello hello yeah yeah, uh, uh, yeah yes sir uh, thank you for your nice presentation we have some questions from the audience yes so i'll read it so you can explain those things so first question is that as whether payment management system and payment evaluation system is same or not okay well uh, payment evaluation is a part of payment management system okay payment evaluation is a small aspect of the entire payment management system what is payment evaluation you go to a site and collect some data and then do evaluation based on that results and come out with some option whereas payment management system deals with you know the entire life cycle of the payment okay thank you the next question is that ask whether some irc standards are available for this payment evaluation yes there are uh, codes available uh, if you require i can mail you uh, the names of the codes you know after this presentation okay okay uh, next question is i think from industry there are what is the frequency of payment uh, management in indian roads for example in national highways and state highways they had asked see uh, slowly indian government is also moving towards uh, setting up payment management system the national highway authority of india has set up system for the golden quadrilateral and north south east west corridor roughly about 14000 15000 km of national highways and some of the states for example tamil nadu has a system for their straight highways in karnataka uh, there is a road information system and pms for about 12000 km of straight highways and mdr but it has to you know go down to every municipality and town you know so it, it should happen in next 10 years okay okay thank you sir sir next question is uh, what he has asked is is there is any non destructive method to find the depth of bituminous layer oh yeah uh, they are they are uh, uh, gpr instruments are available so if uh, for the same uh, network survey vehicle you can uh, fix the gpr instrument in front of the vehicle and uh, it will give you a fair uh, results of uh, depth of uh, each layers is available okay okay thank you sir now i'll uh, ask uh, pp sir to give sir uh, thank you very much sir nice of you to have uh, come on to this workshop uh, you have been a support to the I would request to continue 
the same support card department for and tech students as well as ugc thank you very much sir thank you thank you thank you very much thank you sir thank you sir okay Pramod sir, you can uh, end the session now.